What's going on, guys? Mad Lab here. I am in New Jersey. I am not in Orange County, California this week. Um, I had to come back for some family things. That's why, obviously, you don't see the logos behind me. You don't see my partner in crime next to me. Um, so I'm shooting this video solo this week. This is brought to you by the Mayo Media Network, uh, a great network uh, of guys. Works as a cohesive unit. Every sport, tons of content. Uh, MMA, especially, you have guys like Cody and Paul doing the Dog of Pass podcast. You have Brett Atley doing his you know, favorite leans, his fades, and stuff like that for DraftKings. Just great, great content all the way across the board. So click like, subscribe, um, and you know, comment below. Tell me what you think of our content. My job here, Anthony's job here, is to uh, deliver our main event breakdowns, tell you what we like um, from a wagering perspective, from a DFS perspective, or just from a picking perspective, what we see and what we like. Um, I, usually this is extremely comedic. Uh, me and Anthony always, you know, ping pong off each other back and forth. I want to bring something serious. I think once in a while it is, it is okay to do that. Uh, I just want to, you know, bring something to your attention. I think it's very important to do so. And if I can get through to one person to maybe do it, um, it's a win, right? Um, so, you know, I, I think it's really important that everybody, you know, in our life, I know everybody's busy, but I think it's very important that everybody goes to get checked out. Uh, once in a while. Cancer is a very, very serious thing. Uh, we've seen things come and go like the COVID virus where they come out with vaccines so quick. And, you know, uh, this is the one thing that just seems to be not curable. Um, and, and the reason why it's not curable is because everybody can uh, carry uh, cancer in their body. Uh, but what it is, it's, it's when it mutates into other things that it actually forms that, that cancer. Um, and I think it's very, very important to get checked out, you know, go through your daily routines, um, get your blood work done, you know, go for your colonoscopies, go for your endoscopies, and just make sure everything's okay, because God forbid, you know, something ever does happen, uh, or they, you know, the, the sooner that they detect these things, the better. Um, so it's just a little bit of a heads up for you guys. You know, we have a lot of fun on here. This is, you know, obviously about sports. It's about MMA. It's about winning money. It's about having a good time. Uh, but every once in a while, it's okay to kind of deter back and just bring something to your attention. It's a very, very serious thing. Uh, and if I can get through to one of you guys, like I said, it's a win. So just be on top of yourselves. Be on top of your body. Listen to your body. You know, go get your checkups. Um, and, and just don't wait too long because sometimes if you wait too long, too long is too long. You know, so um, the sooner you get in there, <clears throat> the sooner you get checked out, the sooner you get okayed, uh, or, or the sooner you get in there and God forbid something happens where they see something, um, they can, you know, they can really react on it quick um, and, and possibly save your life or save a loved one's life. So definitely, definitely um, stay on top of that and just keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, let's jump into the card. So this is a decent card, right? It's not the greatest card in the world. It's nothing that... Um, um, you know, to write home about. It's not pay-per-view worthy or anything like that, but it is, it's a decent card. There's some good fights. This is definitely not a card for the casuals like the last card. Uh, this is much more of a card. Oh, let's talk about Chris Weidman real quick. So we at the MadLabMMA.com, I mean, our Discord was, ex was, was lit, lit to the bone. And it was basically because we, you know, had so many good calls and so many good leans on these things for DraftKings that it really put a lot of, you know, our subscribers in a really good situation. Uh, for instance, Molina. Uh, we were all over Molina. I thought that was going to be a fire, fire fight, and it absolutely was. He ended up scoring about 130 points. He was a very good play. We were all over Anthony Smith. I was saying it all week. Uh, Anthony Smith, not going to sit here, and I'm not going to take a ton of credit for it, but the fact of the matter is, you know, that that injury was due to, you know, a, 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 a kick from Anthony Smith. So he kind of triggered that whole thing off. So we were all over him. So everybody was sitting in a really, really, really good spot um, with that. And, you know, for me, for one, I was sitting on about a $20,000 jackpot um, with two fights left. I had Kamar Usman left, which to me was a lock, and I said that on the podcast uh, and this show. And also I had Chris Weidman in that lineup. And... Excuse me. When that happened, um, you know, when the fight started and he threw that kick and I heard that kick, I remember just saying to myself, holy shit, like this guy's been working on his leg kicks. There was like just so much snap to it. Then when he stepped back and I saw him go down, um, I was just like, what a nightmare. I just took my phone. I threw it. I was like, there you go. And then it was just like from there on in. And the crazy thing was people still cashed because our lineups were so set nice going into that. We still had Usman going. But I mean, that fight, that kick was the turning point from, I mean, my subscribers, some of them 
you know, taking down the big tournament, uh, me taking about 20, Anthony taking down a bunch of tournaments. I mean, it was it, it would have been such a great night if that fight would have lasted uh, and he possibly would have won. But we obviously, the health is first. We hope they, you know, he does well. We hope he heals up quick and soon. But the irony of that fight, to know that the same thing happened um, to his opposition in Anderson Silva was really freaky. I mean, that is super, super freaky. Uh, for that to happen a couple, you know, years ago. Um, and that's how he beat Anderson Silva. And then it kind of comes back and bites him in the butt uh, and gets him. So we do hope, um, well, we wish him well. Uh, but that definitely was a um, a big uh, a driver for us uh, not to cash him serious, serious money. Um, so this fight, kind of interesting, right? You got Dominic Reyes, 7,900. Uh, and you got Yiri at 8,300. Uh, you know, I was a little... Taken back, right? When I saw that Yeri was getting a main event, this is a guy who just kind of debuted, you know, against um, Volkan Ozdemir. Had a very good showing against him. You know, obviously knocked him out. He won the fight. He scored about 93 DraftKings points on that. If you really look at his record, I mean, his record is impressive. You know, he's 27-3. and three. He's got 24 KOs. Uh, he's got three losses. And two. K he's lost twice by KO uh, and once by submission. So this guy's been finished pretty much every time uh, that he's fought. You know, but is he worthy of a, of this spot? Is he worthy of a main event spot right now? That's the weird thing about this. I mean, I know Dominic Reyes is on a two-fight skid, but look at the guys he's lost to. Jan Blahovich, current champion, right? Uh, John Jones, we could arguably say he's possibly one of the GOATs. I will never say the GOAT. I don't know why people still think he's the GOAT. But if you look at his record, I mean, he you know, he beat Weidman. He beat Ozdemir. Um, he beat OSP, he beat Cannoneer, Kimball and Christensen, who cares? But this is a guy who, you know, before those two top level, top, you know, those elitists, uh, he, you know, he was he was on a tear. You know, he was doing really well. People were looking at this guy like he could have been the next big thing. You know, um, a lot of people will argue that, you know, with that fight with John Jones, you know, that that was a lot closer than the judges um, made it out to be. But now you're looking at Yeri and he's like, okay, well, he beat Vulcan Ozdemir. But Volkan Ozdemir hasn't really been the Volkan Ozdemir that, you know, when he first came into the UFC, you know, no time Ozdemir was just knocking people out with like these phantom punches and stuff like that. He kind of settled in, you know, Volkan kind of settled in now. Now he's like kind of being a little bit more strategic. He's, he's not really charging in. He's trying to be a little bit more of a points fighter, utilizing his power to an extent, but not overloading, trying to touch you a little more. Uh, and I don't think that really works for him. You know what I mean? It really, really doesn't. Some people also say that Ozdemir possibly beat Reyes, you know, in that fight in a decision. Not going to sit here, not going to argue with it, but you can't turn back time. He lost the fight. But, you know, when you got Yeri, I mean, he fought Ozdemir and now he's getting this spot. I don't, I don't really agree with it. I, I don't know. I don't understand. I don't know if, if this is... I don't see them wanting Dominic Reyes to leave the division. I don't see them wanting to hand Dominic Reyes a pink slip. I do think he still does have upside. I do still think he does have talent. I think he's very athletic. I think he's one of the more athletic guys in the division. Um, you know, so it's kind of a weird situation here. Why a guy debuting, winning one fight, is getting this spot? It's kind of weird. You know, um, the the thing I see about his style is, in in, in on a pro setting, uh, it's good because it's very hard to train for somebody like Yeri. He's very, very unchained. You know, he has a lot of fun in there. He's all over the place. He's got this herky-jerky movement. He, you know, he leaves his hands down, um, you know, which I personally never like. I always express that. Never leave your hands down. Never showboat too much. We've seen time and time again people who do that. Eventually, you're going to get clipped. Um, or you're just going to lose in the eyes of the judges because the showboating is fun. But if you're not out giving me output and you're not scoring, what you know, what's the point? You know, so... I, I like Yeri. I think he's a very talented fighter. Um, I do think he showboats a little bit too much. I think he has a little bit too much in there. Uh, does a little bit too much showboating in there. A little bit too much. But when you and when you look at when he's going to start climbing the ladder and fighting some of these these more elitist of fighters, it's not going to work. It's really not going to work. You know what I mean? All, all that much. They're, these guys aren't really going to bite that. Um, he's very long. He's got good pop in his shot. Uh, he, he's he's accurate. He knows how to fight in range. He knows how to fight in close. So the dude is definitely, definitely talented. He's got a big frame, um, you know, and, and he seems like when he's in there, he's trying to toy you into his game. He's trying to kind of like tangle you into his web. Uh, and I see in a lot of his film, a lot of people bite into it. A lot of people get frustrated. A lot of people just kind of charge in and they try to, 
you know, meet him in the middle. And that's not the way you fight a guy like Gary. You could let him showboat. You could let him do all these things. You let him talk to you. But at the end of the day, you got to fight your own fight. You got to fight your own fight. And if you're going to fight a guy like Gary, he's going to do that. And you're going to engage. You're going to need to create angles. You you know, you're going to need to create these 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 traps and throw out these grenades and these little landmines to see if he's going to step on them. You got to be at, you got to be creative because he's being creative in a sense with his showboating, with his putting his hand, hands down and doing all these like herky jerky movements. You got to be just as creative in a technical aspect where you're trying to create these angles to see what he's stepping on and what he's not stepping on. Eventually, he's going to fight. If you put him in a bad position, the showboating is going to stop and he's going to fight. You got to get him into that mode. You got to get him into that fight mode where it's going to be you know, technical versus technical and not like technical trying to figure out this 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 movement that's very hard and difficult to train for. There's certain fighters out there that are hard to train for. Guys like Tony Ferguson, you can't train for a guy like that. You know, um, I even guys like Marab, Davishvili, like a guy with that kind of a motor that's just constantly on your hips, constantly on your hips, constantly on your hips, constantly on your hips. You know, eventually your blueprint goes out the window because when it doesn't work and when you can't shake a guy off your hips or... Um, you know, somebody's movements are just so unmimicable, uh, you kind of tend to just say, all right, well, I'm going to jump into the fire now and I'm going to just fight my fight and see what happens. Similar to Yeri, not as much, but he brings and presents that style where it is hard to mimic and you got to just kind of see what kind of cards he's dealing you, um, you know, and, 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 and play on the fly. The reason why I like Ray is in this fight I don't think he belongs to be an underdog here. I think he belongs, uh, you know, the favorite. The guy's fought a ton of people. The guy's fought a lot of big names. The guy's beat big names. He's also lost two fights of big names. You know, a lot of people may be looking at it this like he's on a two-fight skid. These two fights are the first two fights that he's lost. Maybe he can't bounce back. You know what? You're right. Maybe he can't bounce back. Maybe he can't. Um, we don't know that yet. But from a technical aspect, the guy is a talent. The guy does have good striking. The guy knows how to create angles. The guy puts combinations together very well. He's got a very good snapping jab. He's got very good strikes, very good kicks. He understands how to utilize the canvas of the cage. He uses the entire cage. Uh, you know, he's obviously shown that he can submit people if he needs to. Um, you know, the the guy is... is um, a talented, talented kid. He really, really is a talented kid. Now, some will question his chin. Some will say, well, you know what? Jan tested his chin. Jan knocked him out. It happens. Like, you you, you know, it, it does happen. I mean, it's not every day where a fighter is going to go undefeated. You can't look at everybody like uh, uh, like Habib. I mean, it, that's, that's, he's an anomaly. It, uh, it happened to George St. Pierre. It happens to everybody. You know what I mean? So I don't personally like that it's happened twice in a row. But then when you look back and you see, listen, he lost to John Jones. He lost to the current champion, Jan Blahovich. It's not like he's losing to Ozdemir and OSP and he's losing to these, these mid-tier guys, um, you know, and back to back to back to back. He's losing to the best of the best. All the other guys he's beating, he's beating the Cannoneers, he's beating the OSPs, the Ozdemirs, the Weidmans. He's beating those guys. But once he gets up to that level, can't say for good, as of right now, he just can't win. I don't see Yeri having a chance against John Jones. I don't see Yeri beating Jan Blahovich either. You know what I mean? So this is a good fight for both men. This is this is really a, a, a pedestal fight for Yeri when it comes to if he does end up beating Reyes, he's going to take a major jump because, like I said, this is a guy who just debuted in his. You know, he's coming off his debut fight. He's getting a main event spot. He wins this. He's going to get some shine. Reyes on the downturn. His back is against the wall here. This is a guy who can't go three fights down. This is going to be a very bad look if he loses to this guy. Um, I think the movement, I think the the jab, I think the ability to stay patient, calm, and composed is going to be his best friend in this fight. I don't want to see Reyes attacking. I don't want to see him pushing forward too much. I want him to attack when the window's open. When these windows open, that's when you're going to attack. You're not going to sit there and you're not going to try to you're going to try to create things to make him open windows. But do not go in trying to punch your hand in the window. He's got to attack when the window's open. If he does that, there's going to be plenty of windows open with Yeri. Watched a lot of film on this guy. Uh, and the guy is extremely aggressive. The guy has very good power. Um, he's very accurate. He does have a very long, you know, po uh, poppy jab. Um, he's got very diverse striking. So he's dangerous. He's very, very dangerous. So you got to really mind your P's and Q's. 
But I don't see him as this speed demon that understands how to really create all these crazy angles. He does it with his herky-jerky movements. He just does it with, you know, throwing things here and putting his hands down and making you bite and making you think, well, my hands are down. Like, now you could come. He kind of makes you play a game where Reyes is the more athletic guy. He understands the technical fundamentals a little bit better. And I really think he's going to be able to create the combinations and to create the the path where he's going to be able to get in a little quicker, get out a little quicker, get in a little quicker, get out a little quicker. Uh, you know, from a DraftKings perspective, when you look at Reyes, I mean, I mean, come on, he's he really is all value up until a couple fights. I mean, he fought Christensen 130. He fought Kimball 107. He fought Cannoneer 108. OSP 81. He got the decision with Ozdemir. It was a stinker of a fight. He only scored um, 48. He goes, fights Chris Weidman, knocks him out, 103. Uh, obviously, he lost his last two fights, so he didn't cover value. But this is a guy from a market value standpoint, 7,900. He has covered, and he has hit the 100-point mark, one, two, three, four, you know, four times since he's been under the UFC umbrella. So this is a guy at 7,900, sub-8,000, who does hold value. Slight dog. Uh, I see this line moving a little bit more as the week goes on into Yuri's favor. Um, but, you know, Reyes is all value here. I think the, the experience... Um, the, you know, he, uh, he's, he's in there with a crowd. He's been in there, you know, um, you know, with, with, uh, you know, uh, on, on the big stage. I mean, he fought John Jones, you know what I mean? In prime time and everybody watched the fight. Yeri hasn't really been there. You don't know how he's going to react to this, this focal point where this is about him now. Cause at the end of the day, the card is the card, but the card is really about the two guys in the main event. So he is kind of about him now. Um, you know, I, I think he's going to be ready for it. I don't think he's going to buckle under the pressure. I just think that Reyes is going to be a little sharper, get into his spots um, a little bit better. I think he's going to be tentative in the beginning. I'm thinking, you know, he's still in his mind saying, listen, I'm on a two-fight skid. I can't lose three. But I do think he ultimately gets it done. When you look at Yeri, 8,300, there's really a small sample size here from a drafting perspective. He knocked down Ozdemir, 93. But if you're looking at that from a value perspective, this is a five-round fight. So there is going to be value there. There is going to be, there's value on both sides. Um, but like I said, I am picking Reyes. From a wagering standpoint, personally for me, I'm staying away from this one. Too many elements involved. Uh, too many question marks about Reyes, where he is mentally. Uh, too many question marks about how Yeri is going to really um, be able to handle a guy as athletic as Reyes. Somebody who really understands how to use good footwork and, and, and good striking. It's a lot of elements involved. The line is kind of close. I'm picking Reyes, but it's a fight that I'm ultimately, from a wagering uh, uh, perspective, going to stay away from, uh, unless maybe a, po a, a prop pops up or something like that, which I would probably indicate in the article that goes along with this. But as of right now, this is a fight that I just want to uh, watch. So both of these guys do hold value. Um, I think you do want a piece of this. I think both of these guys have the ability to knock each other out. As you saw, that Reyes has been knocked out with you know somebody who they call him Polish power, but he really doesn't have that much much pop in his shot, but he has been knocked out. And then obviously Yeri, uh, in his three losses, he's been finished all three times. So you got five rounds now these guys got to work to try to finish one another. So I think you do want a piece of this. I'm going to have a little bit more Reyes. Um, if you wanted to take, you know, 10 lineups and put them all in, I would say 6-4 for Reyes. If you wanted to back out on one, you know, to keep, you know, if you wanted to fade the main event, which some people like to do all together, try to be different in large field GPPs, I'm fine with that too. But slight lean on Reyes. I think it's going to be a really good fight. It's going to be an interesting fight. Uh, benchmark fight for both guys. Benchmark fight up. Benchmark, Mike, you know, fight down, um, you know, for Reyes if he, uh, if he loses. Um, so it's a good fight. It's definitely going to be a good, interesting fight. But my lean is Reyes. So I will talk to you guys soon. I'll see you next week for the main event breakdown.